that didn't really fit into a, any place, but it's really important is the module system that all of the sites use. So we, we have been already using these module load commands and what these module load commands are basically like in these clusters, because we have so many different users and different users have different software needs. We can't just like up get install stuff <laughs> or something like that to put something for everybody. Uh, instead, we need to have separate installations of various versions of software. And these are provided through this module system. So these modules are basically like, uh, like shortcuts to the programs. When you load this module or this shortcut, you, the program becomes visible to you. And that is how it basically works. Like in when you run this module load command, you will uh, yeah, let's uh, see. So yeah, we, we have an example down here. So let's see yeah. what Python version we have. Yeah. You can do this on your... Yeah. And just for fun, let's see that Python. Okay. Can you check which Python? So which is a command that tells where the command line finds these. So these are the yeah. system Python, for example. Mm -hmm. So and then let's should we module load? Yeah, yeah let's do the Anaconda module load. Mm, actually, I'll do something. Okay. Mm. Module load Anaconda. So now let's do. Move these up. So. so before it was Python 368 or 3, yeah, 368. Now Python 3 is 385. And since within this module Python is probably Python 3, we see Python without 3 is also 3.8. And let's do which Python? So we see now these are going to this path, which is actually a fully automated Anaconda environment builder, which Simo has created because otherwise software becomes too unmanageable. So how does this actually work? Mm, well, if we look at one other thing, if we module list, we can see what is loaded. So, yeah, and what, what it actually does on the background is that it sets these environment variables that are basically like, uh, like it, in this case, it sets this path variable so that tells basically the command line where to find the, where to find the yeah. Anaconda or the Python installation. And then yeah. once, so basically it, it tells like a shortcut for the command line to know that, okay, I will find Python here. Or you look at these folders if you need to look at the executables. Yeah. So uh, path is what a program uses to figure out when you run something. So you type Python and it searches each of these directories in path from start to end until it finds the first Python. So we see, well, now this has been added hmm. to the front of path. It's been prepended, just like try, it says here. Try unloading the module and let's see how the path changes. So you can load and you can unload these. And, and if you do unload, it should reverse whatever was there. Yeah. So for example, here we can see that it's removed from the path. Yeah, and this is, so there's the Anaconda part and the rest. Now here we only have the rest. Yeah, so, so basically you don't really need to know how they work, but basically the module system, they basically, whenever you load a module, you're supposed to get access to the so software in question. And that should work like, like the stuff in that software should work. And these are like something that we have installed for you. Uh, like a lot of people set some like module load commands into their bash RC or the home folder, but these are, that's usually not a good idea because that might like yeah. you might get un unexpected consequences if you like if you're doing something and you don't recognize that you already have like this module loaded and then then you get errors so it's better to like 
just re like remember what software you're using and load them if needed. And of and also, if you're writing these uh, Slurm scripts, uh, they can act as like a uh, documentation for you because in those scripts, you it's good idea to write the same module or you should write the same module load commands there as you write into your mm -hmm. own. Uh, uh, like as you do in the command line. Yeah. So basically, so, these are like like let's say if you have a uh, Python, you do an import statement. This is basically the same kind of thing. You get some software available for you from a package, basically. So yeah. Similarly to any other programming language. So um, yeah, and there's also different versions of modules. So for yes. example, in this MATLAB. If we do module spider MATLAB, we see so mo module spider is basically this search command. Spider is, is this it's the search that goes through the whole thing. Do you know why it's called spider? I think it crawls through the directories where the modules are mm. specified. I think that's mm. the idea. I mean, it's very obtuse, but yeah. yeah, spider isn't exactly what I would known for crawling, but. Anyway, so we see there's different versions here, all the way from 2016 to 2020. And this is really important because if anyone, like if you ask us to upgrade any particular thing, likely someone else needs the old version. So instead of changing it for everyone, we add a new module. So here, let's say I need this MATLAB. And I do this, and then I do module list, and we see the older one. So if your module load command includes the version, you can be reasonably confident that it won't be changing over time. And it basically will be fixed even when we update things. If you don't use that, then you might get a newer version at any time. And you will have to then go and fix your code. So if you want to keep your code up to date, maybe that's a good thing. If you want it to never change and always work, then maybe you don't want that. So let's see. Mm. Don't think there's a point of doing this extra type along thing. Um, OK, this is just yeah, what I just said. You should, uh, maybe you could run like a uh check on what's available, like module avail or module spider. Sure. Mm. In the documentation, there's more hints on like, if you want to create these module collections, for example, if you want to like have your favorites and choose them, yeah. uh, you can use that. But for example, so... you can here see that some of like module avail gives you available, av available software. And there's quite a bit of it. And you have these D flags where the defaults are set. Mm. So uh, some of the are set as defaults. But you get like you get the idea. There's there's a bunch of software available. Yeah. And you could ask, how do we install so much stuff? It's because we have scripts and there's other software projects which are explicitly made in order to automatically install other things. So where it's like the meta software level. It's so unmanageable, you have to um, do yeah, You this. have to write installers for installers, basically. It's, it's a bit of a mess, but but still it's uh, it's something that uh, gladly, like, it's good that it, it exists because otherwise we couldn't support so many software suites. Uh, we are, yeah. some of this software is uh, Missing from other sites, we are currently in the process of updating like our newest batch of software to other sites, but they will be there soon. Yeah. Okay. So. Did you get the GPU job running? I just noticed that uh, it seems that uh, we are in the process of process of updating some of the GPU nodes, so uh, that's why probably they were not yet. Uh, that's why it's probably in the queue still. So the cheap, you're muted, Richard. Yeah, so. Um, 
Well, yes, we I'm have sorry. 15 minutes left. Oh, here's a full reference of all the different module commands. Um, well, you can see. And yeah. So what should we do in our remaining 15 minutes? <laughs> 